At OceanX, our mission is to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. But we can't do it alone. Scientists, divers, explorers, volunteers, and ocean lovers of all kinds are working to understand and protect the ocean in their own communities and around the world. These are their stories. We're coming up on a two male Svalbard reindeer. They're standing a couple of hundred meters in front of us now. You can actually get quite close to them because they have evolved without hunting and predators. So they are not really afraid of humans. I think it's fascinating <laughs> to see them. <laughs> My name is Åse Lundvik Pedersen. I work as a terrestrial ecologist with the Tundra ecosystem in Svalbard and my main responsibility is to work with the Svalbard reindeer and to run these long-term monitoring programs. I remember the first time I came to Svalbard in January 1996. It was really bad weather, it was completely dark. This environment is quite extreme in, in many senses. You have a really long dark season, then you have the same really long four month season with the midnight sun. But you have to take advantage of what every season offers you. The Svalbard reindeer is endemic to Svalbard. That means that it's only found here and it has a lot of uh, different adaptations to the harsh conditions. They are much smaller than most other uh, wild reindeer and their entire body is completely covered by fur. There is no skin exposed at all. These two males seem to be selectively picking the seeds of these grass species as opposed to what they normally do, vacuum clean the tundra. But now they are after the most nutritional parts of the plant since it's late in the season. They need to be at their fattest before they enter winter. They were probably quite numerous before humans came, but then they hunted them down and they became very, very few. In the early 1900s, the population had dropped down to around a thousand individuals due to overharvesting from the trapping and whaling season. In 1925, they were protected and they started to recover. So by the mid 80s, they had recovered to around 10, 11,000 individuals. And since then, we have a doubling of the population. So today we have around 22,000 individuals on Svalbard. I think this is a great example of how uh, of a very successful conservation story where you manage to restore or recover the population. The long-term monitoring of the Svalbard reindeer started actually in the late 1970s and since then there has been surveys that we do every winter and every summer to actually monitor the population, to know how many they are, the composition of the population, how they survive, how they die. And we try to relate all this to the changing environment because they are heavily impacted by the changes we see from climate change. Climate change is challenging the reindeer in many ways, in both good ways uh, and negative ways. The warmer summer, it gives higher plant biomass production, and that means that the reindeer can go into the winter, probably in better condition. But when it comes to the winter climate, you have more extreme events. You get these rain and snow episodes almost every year. And when they occur, then they encapsulate the plants completely in ice and then they will starve uh, to death. The lack of sea ice is actually affecting reindeer in a very important way because they have lost that corridor of migration. When winters are bad, they need to move somewhere else. Currently in the fjords of Svalbard, there is basically no sea ice today. And when you don't have sea ice, you get isolated uh, populations that uh, have a loss of genetic diversity. If this was all frozen, the reindeer would be able to actually go all the way across to the other side of the fjord. That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so they just become isolated along. When you have bad conditions in winter, when you get those rain and snow events and you get a glaciated foraging landscape, the reindeer sometimes move down to the seashore to feed on what we see here, seaweed and kelp.
On this map, we have the monitoring areas that we do. So here you can see these kind of isolated peninsulas where the reindeer are more or less stuck on these coastal ranges. When you have no ice, there is no way to, to get across. We used to say that the reindeer have evolved in an environment without predators. But I think these days, when you have more polar bears on land, I think the interaction is changing. There is an increasing reports on polar bears actually taking reindeer. But I expect with more bears on land, we will see more incidents. This spreadsheet is just showing the data back from 1978 till today. So this red shows the population monitoring data from the start of the Advent Down count in 1979. And you see clearly an upwards trend in the figure with an increase in the population. When we look at this blue line here, that's the population monitoring data from the coastal ranges. The population in Advental is going upwards, while the population on the coastal range, where we also monitor, has a completely opposite. So you have two different populations with two very different trends driven by climate change. The Svalbard reindeer is endemic, so it's special to Svalbard. So we have a special responsibility to conserve and protect that species. I think in many ways the Svalbard reindeer is a success story when it comes to conservation. The populations have doubled over quite, quite a short time. But we still have a lot of questions that we have not resolved yet um, related to climate change and related to the environmental changes we see. So I think that's the main reason why we're out here every year to track what's actually going on with the population. We need this knowledge in order to conserve the population for the future.